YouTube, Instagram. This is my first recording down here in my new practice space. I'm hoping that some of you can join me live. And I'm going to be speaking to you uh, from the past on YouTube. What I intend to do here is practice and explain my process as I go. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to be cutting out the nice bits and uh, getting those out on Instagram later on. But the real value is going to be uh, here uh, in the long form content where I'm actually explaining uh, some of my thinking process as to how I'm developing skills. I'm guessing if uh, you guys are tuning in, you're either just interested in drums or perhaps um, you're drummers yourselves. And either way, I imagine uh, it may be quite insightful for you to hear about what I'm thinking as I develop my skills. I'm going to be tweaking the kit as I go, but mostly I'm just going to be having fun. tricky double with the left hand. I want to be able to play this at greater speed, so I'm going to need to do some work. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slow down. taking a shorter selection of the phrase so that I can hone in on the problem with the left hand. now thinking, well, maybe there's value in just training my left hand to do this anyway. Ultimately, we want as many options as we can get as players. So regardless of whether this phrase in particular is going to end up useful, I might just stick with this left hand anyway and see if I can get it to do what I want it to do. questions.
struggle at speed, I want to slow this down and really get it nice and precise at a slow speed, and then I'm going to work it back up again. experimenting with this left hand thinking is it easier to rotate the radius and ulna bones in the arm to supinate and pronate or is it easier to rotate at the shoulder come over this way I don't know if you guys can see the difference two options rotating at the shoulder joint here or supinating and pronating the arm. Oh, now I'm thinking maybe I could just leave the stick on the skin. Mm, not quite getting so much out of the tambourine. Maybe I could think about positioning here. Talk to me.
And of course, these muscles are going to have to work, but I want to see how little they can work in order to make that sound. So I'm going to slow down and really start to study with the feeling sense and the visual sense exactly what I'm doing with the hands and whether or not I can do any less. <laughs> surface right now. Tuning the skin a little lower will give you a little bit more give there. Maybe loosen off the wires a little too. So there's a compromise between feel and sound. And really what I want is, is that all that changes is that I do it faster. So when I'm playing slow, I'm really able to do as, as little as possible with the hands. To have them nice and relaxed. As I speed up, the temptation of course is to grip a little harder. And change things. Well, I want to change as little as possible. I want it to be that I'm doing the same thing as I'm doing when I'm playing slow, only faster.
can just leave that left foot running. Got this uh, really cool old uh, auxiliary hi hat stand, which has this um, this little part that you can kind of twist. So you don't have to fiddle around with the clutch to change the tightness of the hats. You can just twist this thing round on the bottom. And that'll change it from a closed hat, semi-open, all the way through.
with these kinds of phrases. Think about the feel of my snare drum again. Like I said earlier, it's always a compromise. Now I feel like I want a harder surface. Maybe I just need to set up like six snare drums. It's always amazing to watch. It's the same temptations that I'm encouraging students to overcome all day, every day, right here in myself. I want to play this thing fast. But I know the best thing for me to do is to play it slow. on these ghost notes here. Let me hydrate.